We used several methods and we had a two-phase study to design the intervention. The first phase was a qualitative study with, uh, where we collected data from 12 key informant participants in Detroit. We included a sample of adolescents between 14 to 17 years of age, community-based organization employees, uh, program coordinators specific to youth programs, and we also interviewed parents of teenagers between the ages of 14 to 17 who had type 2 diabetes. They, we then use the key informant data to design and inform the design and content of the program. The second phase was a quantitative pre-post pilot study. We recruited from the general Detroit population in southwest Detroit as well as Eastside Detroit from our community partner groups. 46 participants, 22 were randomized into the intervention site, um, took part in the intervention, and 24 were part of the comparison group. Our program is called the Youth Health Promotion Challenge. It is um, tailored and specifically includes multimedia. We have both um, PowerPoint in the delivery, it's a group session. We did not feel that adolescents would want a paper-based workbook, so we designed an interactive CD-ROM that they get, that they take home and can then use. Um, that all program materials are included. Additionally, we have tailored that to one of the findings from the key informant interviews was almost what we could tag as exercise literacy. Adolescents felt they didn't know how to perform a sit-up correctly. So that basic. So what we did was we hired two models, one Hispanic and one African American in the age group, and we worked with MFIT and designed and tailored the photographs and appropriate photographs using the models. So the adult caregivers and the community-based organization representatives really communicated a lack of engagement in physical activity by the population. They also pointed to diet and food intake of adolescents. Um, hot Cheetos are very popular, it seems. And uh, they also said that there was little awareness and communication of type 2 diabetes within the family, the household. So parents are not talking to the child about their type 2 diabetes, their status, therefore there is little knowledge of family history and how that could impact their um, future health. The adolescents are engaged in different activities related to type 2 diabetes, including interpretation. Uh, the Hispanic population, one example was of a young woman who is very proud that she has not um, made an error in dispensing her father's diabetes medications as her older sister has because her, the dad was hospitalized when the older sister had made a mistake with his medications. So there's a, you know, we need to tailor and address navigation of the healthcare system as well as the clinical setting and tailored specifically to the needs of the population. We don't want them to serve as interpreters, but if they are engaging in some of these preventive and clinical care related um, measures, we need to make sure that they better understand them. When I asked, what do you tell your father? She said, I come up with words. I try to find a word because she may not necessarily understand the English word and how to translate it into Spanish. Youth participants in the in-depth interviews had little knowledge, of course, of type 2 diabetes. We weren't surprised. And they also exhibited um, some fatalism. It just happens. It happens to all of us. So we knew we also needed to address that and making sure that people and the adolescent population understood that type 2 diabetes can be prevented or delayed. They did not see themselves as vulnerable, even though there was a family history. 
And we specifically recruited first degree family history. So each of the children had a parent with type 2 diabetes. Um, they did talk about barriers to physical activity and they again noted their love for chips and hot Cheetos. The six session program that we piloted was um, very interactive with problem solving, skills training, and discussion. We had different activities and addressed numeracy, genetic literacy, health literacy, as well as computer literacy. So we specifically took different elements of diabetes prevention and reduced them into two-hour sessions as best we could to address the behaviors of the adolescent population. This is an example of one of the um, CD-ROM interactive materials, and this is top ramen because um, that is what the kids eat, and that's what they wanted. And we go through this very carefully, and if you notice sodium intake, um, also very surprised about how packaging has two servings. Why does why isn't it just one and who is trying to trick us? So we are uh, discussing, have those types of discussions with the adolescent populations. Uh, this is, again, tailoring to what they like and enjoy. The um, label on the left is the original Hot Cheeto, and then the one on the right closest to me is the baked Hot Cheeto version. So again, taking them through the steps of how to read a label, ingredients, and um, also better understanding daily intake. Some preliminary findings from just a description of the population, 61% um, were met, had high BMI, 85% or greater, age and sex adjusted, and using the Realm team, teen over 48% were below grade level. At post-test, adolescents in the program had higher mean scores in type 2 diabetes, higher self-efficacy, higher health literacy, but it was still below grade level, and no differences in non-fasting blood glucose, waist circumference, or age and sex-adjusted BMI were found. This was a six-week post. Uh, we also have three-month post data that we will be looking at. So our next steps include revising the program. The adolescent population in a process evaluation noted that they would like for it to be longer. The six sessions were not sufficient. They actually wanted to be working on um, with a group a little bit longer. We have submitted for funding. An R01 application was submitted. And the steering committee is very much uh, engaged and committed to addressing functional health literacy in the Detroit youth population, so we will continue to meet and move forward. And ongoing health literacy research that I'm also involved with includes uh, the use of pictographs to communicate health risk w within an adolescent population, uh, assessment and understanding of oral health and type 2 diabetes with my colleague, Chris um, Klossner. Klossman and um, the uh, College of Dentistry, and the design of an oral exchange communication measure with colleagues at the University of Alabama, Birmingham. And given that the majority of communication is oral, health-related communication is delivered orally, we want to make sure that we also identify appropriate health literacy measures. Okay. And um, also I see Dr. Baptist, he and I have been discussing moving forward with health literacy and um, asthma related intervention in uh, for older adults. So thank you very much. This is a little overview of what we're doing.